Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm pleased to begin consideration of H.R. 4800, making appropriations for FY 2015 Agriculture Rural Development Food and Drug Administration related agencies. The bill before us is unique and that the program supported in this bill will virtually impact every American every day of the year. We support American farmers and ranchers who are, all, are very vital to our nation's economy, health, and well-being. We support those at home in need with food and housing and provide rural business with low interest loans and grants to help sustain local economies. We help others around the world that face starvation and malnutrition. We support research and development in agriculture to improve productivity and uh, stability. We support the oversight of commodity markets, providing confidence for business, traders, investors, and the public. We support a safe food supply and effective drug devices. We're fortunate this nation can and does support these vital programs. The bill before us this afternoon reflects a delicate balance of needs and requirements. We have drafted what I consider a responsible bill for FY. The committee will come to order. I'd ask members to take their conversations off the floor. Gentleman from Alabama is recognized. The bill before us today reflects a delicate balance of needs and requirements. Uh, we have drafted and I consider a, a responsible bill for 2015. Uh, the spending levels for the departments and the agencies and that are under the jurisdiction of the uh, subcommittee. We have had to carefully make a priority for the funding in this bill. We've had to make some hard choices and how to, to limit uh, spending. Uh, I want to thank Chairman Rogers uh, from uh, Kentucky for supporting us with a very fair allocation for this bill and for helping us move this bill forward. I also want to thank the subcommittee ranking member, uh, Mr. Farr from California. He has been a valuable partner and a colleague as we've moved forward in this legislation. I appreciate his commitment. I appreciate his understanding as we have moved forward on a wide variety of programs in this bill, and I sincerely thank him for his help. While I and the other sub subcommittee members have a wide array of uh, agriculture in our districts, Mr. Farr represents an area sometimes referred to as the salad bowl of, of the world. I want to thank all the members of the subcommittee for their help and also Ms. Lowy, who is the ranking member for the full committee. Also thank the majority staff for their hard work. Tom O'Brien, Betsy Bina, Pam Miller, Andrew Cooper, and Karen Rudso. I also appreciate the professionalism and the cooperation of the minority staff in particular. I want to thank Martha Foley and Hogan Medlin for their help during all the long hours spent putting together this uh, delicate report and this bill, as well as Rochelle Dornat, Troy Phillips, Katie Willen, and all of Mr. Farr's staff. When the subcommittee began the FY15 appropriations process, I asked my colleagues to keep in mind three guiding principles. Uh, the first was to ensure the proper use of funds through robust oversight, ensuring the appropriate level of regulation to protect producers and the public, and to ensure funding is targeted to vital programs. These three principles guided us from the very first when our President's budget was su submitted to the subcommittee and was put before the uh, House, as to when it's put before the House today. This basic framework helped us set principles and priorities during the 10 budget hearings and oversight hearings that we had throughout the spring. And that covered all of USDA's mission areas as well as the Food and Drug Administration and also included the Commodities Future Trading Commission. They also, regarding these frameworks, regarded a principles to consider as we move forward with our colleagues on this bill. In particular, we received more than 3,900 requests from 306 members to support to reduce or amend funding levels in their numerous accounts of this bill. Of course, we could not meet every request, but we tried to address these requests in a bipartisan manner and a way that, we, that was under the House rules. And of course, there's no earmarks included in this bill. The total funding for this bill is $142.5 billion. This is $1.5 billion below the President's request 
and $3 billion below the FY14 enacted level. The bill includes $20.8 billion in discretionary budget authority, which is the same as the FY14 enacted level. Mandatory spending totals $122 billion, or $3 billion below the FY14 level. These mandatory funds support USDA's farm, conservation, crop insurance, and nutrition programs. I'd like to, like to briefly mention a few highlights that are in this bill. We provide $2.8 billion for agricultural research. We'll receive many, many letters requesting support for the land-grant colleges and the universities. We, we were able to provide level funding for them. We also provided $325 million as requested for the Agriculture and Food Research Initiative, which is USDA's premier competitive research grant program. We provided $870 million for the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. This agency works to eradicate plant and animal disease and keep the, the bad bugs out of the country. I'm pleased to say that we're able to increase funding to combat citrus greening disease and the viral epidemic affecting the hog producers. This funding will supplement the emergency funding that the administration announced last week for research and surveillance purposes. The bill also includes more than $1 billion for the Food and Safety Inspection Service. This is approximately the same by 14 level, but $3.8 million above the request. It will maintain more than 8,000 inspectors at more than 6,400 meat, poultry, and egg product facilities across the nation. The bill provides $1.5 billion for the Farm Service Agency, and it does not include closure of any county offices. This proposal made no sense in the 2014 Farm Bill, and it is still being implemented in the county offices across the nation. But we did fully fund the various uh, farm lo loan programs in this bill. For the Natural Resource Conservation Service, we provide $869 million to help farmers, ranchers, and private forest landowners to conserve and protect their land and increase funding to help rehabilitate small dams. This bill is the 12 appropriation bill that truly focuses on rural America. It provides $2.6 billion for the rural development programs. That includes funding to support $881 million in business and industry loans, $1.3 billion in loans for rural water and waste programs, $6.2 billion for rural electric and telephone infrastructure. We also provide more than $1 billion for the single family direct loan program, $1.1 billion for rental assistance, and $30 million for the mutual and self-help program. This bill includes both discretionary and mandatory funding for USDA's food and nutrition programs. In particular, it provides $6.6 .6 billion for the women, infants, and children programs. This is $93 million below the FY14 enacted level, and it's actually $200 million below the budget request. But I want to be clear about this, about the decreased funding, because it is of declining caseload and large carryover balances from the previous year is why, why, why we're doing this. And let me stress that every person who is eligible for the program will be able to receive funding under this uh, uh, funding level in this bill. The bill includes $20.5 billion in required mandatory funding for child nutrition programs and $82.3 billion for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or sometimes referred to as SNAP. This funding level help support more than 47 million Americans each month. To support those in time of need in places like Syria, South Sudan, and Central African Republic, the bill provides $1.7 billion for overseas food aid. We're able to provide a $66 million increase in Food for Peace grants and $13 million for the McGovern Dole Education and Child Nutrition Program, offset from savings that we found elsewhere in the bill. The Food and Drug Administration receives $2.6 billion in discretionary funding in this bill. This is an increase of $23 million over the FY14 level. When the user fees are included, FDA will receive $4.5 billion in FY15. Within the total, the committee provides $25 million increase. Uh, the uh, full amount requested for food safety activities in the President's budget and drug safety activities are increased by 12 million. Furthermore, the bill includes 2. Point, or I'm sorry, 
$218 million for the Commodities Future Trading Commission. This is an increase of $3 million above last year's level and is intended to address information technology needs. Before I close, I do want to address one issue that has opened up a necessary dialogue in local cafeterias and schools across the nation. It is the provision that would allow schools to seek a temporary, and let me stress that, is a temporary waiver from the current school lunch standards if a school district has lost money over the last six period as a result of trying to implement the new regulations. I've had a constant stream of letters. I've talked to people, received emails. I've had meetings over the past year from school nutritionists, from the teachers, the school administrators, I've talked to parents, I've talked to students, all concerned about the rising costs, the increased waste, and the declining participation in the school lunch program. To tell the truth, we have, uh, the students have been concerned about the taste, they've been concerned about the variety and the, and the quality of the meals. But again, we have gone to the school nutritionists, to the teachers and administrators that have identified where the real problem is. This is a real problem in many school districts across the country. Some school districts may not be experiencing this problem, but many, many are across the country. This bill acknowledges the concerns of schools and responds to their request with a, a certain amount of flexibility. It only allows schools more time if they need it. In fact, it provides something very similar to the flexibility that USDA recently announced to the whole, whole grain requirement. The benefits to farmers, ranchers, consumers, and businesses and, patient, pay, and patients provided in this bill far outweigh any one, two objections a member may have about this bill. The real bill represents our best take on matching funds with limited resources. We have tried to work hard to produce the best bill we possibly can within the resources that we've had to work with uh, uh, in this appropriations process. I thank the uh, members for their attention, and uh, I would urge all members to support this bipartisan legislation, and I look forward as we uh, pass this bill on the floor uh, as we move forward, and I reserve the balance of my time.